Hello, this is McD the Beast, and this is McD Sports 4 coming to you today with stuff I want to talk about involving Kawhi Leonard and the San Antonio Spurs. So, if you haven't heard today, Tony Parker decided to sign with the Charlotte Hornets on a two year, $10 million deal. What do I think about the move? Two things. Good for Charlotte because they're getting a good backup point guard, bad for San Antonio. Because this is the end of an era for San Antonio. You have um, Kawhi Leonard requesting a trade. You have Tony Parker leaving. You're going to have Mono Drew be probably retiring now. Um, Popovich is probably out the door after this year on retirement. I mean, to be honest, the Spurs are probably going to have to go into rebuilding mode. And it's a joke. How can this unfold so quickly... It's just amazing to me. Because the sixth best player in the league, in my opinion, Kawhi Leonard, wants out of San Antonio to go to the L.A. Clippers. Because there's reports now saying he'll rather be a Clipper than a Laker, which I never heard of before. Um, I know Kawhi's kind of a different cat. Um, because like he is like one of the few NBA players that support Trump. He's like... I don't like getting too personal, but I mean that is true. He he's very quiet. He dri he has like the same Jeep since he's been in high school. So I mean he is a little bit of a different um, person, but I I'm saying this right now. I have never heard a player say they want to go to the Clippers. And if you're the Clippers, you don't have enough to trade from, which means you have to get a third team involved. And a third team that's like willing to like unload their young asset assets for like next to nothing, which I can't find in the NBA. So I mean, if the Clippers they don't have enough to give up, what's what's it going to be? Shea Alexander, uh, Jerome Robertson, and Tobias Harris for a uh and a first round pick for Kawhi. I mean, that's not enough. Uh, the Lakers, uh, um, they had are probably the best team for um, for him to go to because he will be a very he'll be a number two option, which is laughable because to me if if a, a top ten player should be a number one option, but it's very he's gonna be a number two option behind LeBron James and he's gonna be the two way player that the Lakers need because to be honest. Um, with the if you're a Lakers fan, it you gotta be thinking: Does Magic just just want to keep the young talent, Lonzo Ball, um, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, Josh Hart? I know they let Julius Randle walk to the Pelicans, but do you want? Does Magic Johnson just want to keep that young talent and just sign a free agent next year and just continue to um, grow the talent? And just have LeBron there, and there'll be a playoff team because I do believe in young talent getting blown out in the playoffs. I believe you probably need that for like two years before you you could like start even competing in the playoffs. So I do think is Ma is on um, Magic Johnson thinking that, but who knows? Also, with Kawhi Leonard, I mean. Was, this is what's going to happen with Kawhi Leonard. Uh, and he's not going to any of the LA teams. He's going to go to a dark horse team. To me, that dark horse team, if I had to choose, if I had to think about it, is probably the Minnesota Timberwolves for probably Jeff Teague and Andrew Wiggins. I know the Spurs want one to um, start DeAndre Murray at point guard. Um, he's good for their system, but... I, I don't know if he's like a starter, starter, like a three-star player yet. I know Jeff Teague is. But uh, to me, that could be a dark horse team. I think the Bucks could be a dark horse team with a signing trade, Jari Parker, and they, fl and they throw um, maybe a Thon Maker in there or a Malcolm Brogdon, maybe one of those two. Um, maybe the Pelicans. Um, they th they throw everything in there besides Drew Holiday, um, and Anthony Davis. They will throw everybody else on the trade market. Um, other teams, Memphis Grizzlies. They, by the way, um, 
Kyle Anderson, his um, the, the Grizzlies and him agreed on an offer sheet for four years of thirty-seven and a half million, and the Spurs have forty-eight hours to match it. Same thing with the Kings; they offered uh, Zach Levine a four-year, eighty million dollar deal, and the Bulls have forty-eight hours to match it. And Zach Levine doesn't want them to match it, so we'll see how that goes. Just a little side note there. But Kyle Anderson, he's kind of an off a bench player. He could be going to the Grizzlies unless the Spurs want to match that offer. But I see the Grizz but maybe um the Grizzlies are already kind of like a dark horse. Um other teams, seventy sixers. I still think Markel Fultz, Robert K Covington, uh, maybe for throw out with Sean Holmes and a first round pick is enough to get him. And there are reports that he might not mind Staying in Philadelphia beyond beyond 2019, uh, like he would um, stay in Philadelphia after next season. So you always have that, and like who knows? Maybe the Nuggets make an offer, even though they just trade traded um, they just traded probably one of the ads that they would have traded to San Antonio and Wilson Chandler to the 76ers. And then the Celtics are always lurking, so, and I do think Phoenix could still make an offer. So I mean, those are, I think those are some of the dark horses that could go for Kawhi um, Leonard. But the Spurs are screwed in my opinion because in my opinion, whatever the hell they get back, they're not making the playoffs next year. Your best player next year is going to probably be going Marcus Aldridge, which basically, to me, is uh, you have like a four-star player, and eh, that's not good enough to win a championship. And then the West is going to be tough, so because you have Houston, you have the Warriors, you have the Lakers, you have the Jazz, you have the Thunder, and that's not in a particular order. You have the Pelicans, um, the Trailblazers, the Timberwolves, uh, the Nuggets. Are all go To me, all of them are better than you once you get rid of Kawhi. And basically, if you're the Spurs, you're basically screwed because... You're you're not gonna be in rebuild mode because you you have a Marcus Aldridge, Rudy Gay, um, Paul Gasol, so I mean you have players that um you're kind of like in a win now mode with, but I mean Greg Popovich is also still there. There, that's the main reason why. But the Spurs should seriously consider rebuilding and like trading away on Marcus Aldridge and everybody if once they trade Kawhi Leonard. But the first t step to um, the rebuild is training Kawhi Leonard. And by the way, it does make me throw up that Tony Parker left you guys on a two-year, $10 million deal. I mean, you couldn't give him two years, $12 million, two years, $10.5 million. I mean, I know um, Tony Parker wanted more playing time, but really? I mean, it's just upset. Like, I hate when players stick with a team for, for like, 15 years and then they leave for, like, to, uh, like, Tony Parker's flat out leaving for the money, by the way. I mean, the, the Hornets aren't going to win anything next year. They might not even make the damn playoffs. Because there's talks about Kawhi Leonard, not Kawhi Leonard, excuse me. There's talks about Kemba Walker possibly getting traded. So, I mean, basically the Spurs to me are screwed. Um, I don't see them making the playoffs next year at all, no matter what the hell they get back. Even if they do get back Lonzo Ball. Um, Brandon Ingram and Kyle Kuzma, all three of them. I just don't see them making the playoffs. I think it will be a year, and I think they need a new head coach as well. And there's nothing as Coach Pop. Um, I Coach Pop. Uh, I just kind of think it might be best for him just to retire because he had a great legacy in San Antonio. San, San Antonio had a great 17-year run, 18. 20 year one, excuse me, with David Robinson at the end of his career, then Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Mike Joby. And now they kind of died off. T um, Tim Duncan retired. Um, Mike Joby, I, I will be stunned if he doesn't retire um, within the next few days. And Tony Parker's not there anymore. You're trained Kawhi. You're bet I mean, L L Lamarcus Aldridge and Rudy Gay, that's not a bad one two combo. It's just that. I don't think that's good enough in this Western Conference to make the playoffs, and I kind of think you're kind of stuck in the middle this year. And one thing about the NBA, you don't want to be stuck in the middle. You either want to, you either want to be 
very damn good or very damn bad. You you can't be in the middle, and the Spurs are going to be in the middle this year. And to be honest, I just don't see a playoff. I don't see playoffs in San Antonio this year. But um, one other thing I do want to like mildly talk about is long is Lonzo Ball um, possibly being traded for assets for Los Angeles to flip to, for, to the Spurs. Um, I know the Heat are interested. I know that um, I think the Bucks are interested. I think Denver's interested. I think Phoenix is interested. But um, basically, this is, I don't know if they're actually going to trade him to so they could flip parts to San Antonio, but this should be a wake up call for Lonzo Ball. Um, he was a big disappointment in his rookie year, and like I don't think he's a bust. I mean, I know that's been thrown around um, a lot. I don't think he's a bust. I just think he was disappointed because, and part of the, part of the reason is because of his father, Lavar Ball. Um, if he hears this, he's probably gonna try to take a shot at me, which is fine. I don't care, but. It's um, he's part of the reason saying he's gonna be better than Jordan and LeBron. Um, Lonzo Ball kind of was a little bit shaky when shooting the ball. So I mean, kind of rookie struggle struggles. He signed with John Rondo. That was kind of like a LeBron James saying, "I'll come here if you sign um, A, B, and C." And John Rondo is probably A. So, I mean. I, I like Rajon Rondo a lot. I think he's better than Lonzo Ball. I think really um, it's interesting that um, he signed the Lakers because the Lakers are obviously, um, they like the point guards that are similar to like Russell Westbrook, like Rajon Rondo, uh, D'Angelo Russell before they trade him to the Nets for Brooke Lopez and Lonzo Ball. So they obviously like those Pass first type point guards, primarily because of Magic Johnson and see where and they saw where he got them in, in the eighties. So I mean, basically, I the, the Lakers are into that type of point guard. So it's a break up call for Lonzo Ball. Um, I think he will probably play a lot better next year in the Lakers uniform. I don't see, to be honest, I just don't see either LA team getting Kawhi Leonard. By VIA trade, so I, I expect all the young talent to stay in Los Angeles. So that's my view about the Kawhi Leonard, um, that whole Kawhi Leonard um, trade rumor thing. But do I think Kawhi Leonard would be traded by the start of the season? Yes, I do. And it's only because of re there's reports saying he will sit out again, only only because he doesn't um, want to play for San Antonio. He wants out really bad. And they can't repair the relationship like they did with, with Lamarcus Aldridge, saying that he went it out like two seasons ago. But basically, that's kind of my view about the whole thing. Uh, the Spurs are screwed, and Kawhi's not getting traded to an LA team. So those are my um, predictions right there. Um, thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. Check out my other videos on the channel. I do college football predictions. Um, I do. I talk about um, stuff like this. Like I have one about James Winston's three-game suspension. I have um, one about Damian Lillard trade rumors. Um, today, Melo um, probably getting waived by the AKC Thunder. So I do put out videos a lot. Um, so go check out my channel if you want to see more of my content. And once again, thanks for watching and subscribe. And this is. And this is McGee the Beast signing off.